Hey guys, it's Max coming to you guys with another live stream. If you guys are watching this at a later time, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button if you're not yet subscribed and enable those notifications so that next time I go live, you guys will get a little pop up on your phone. And if you're available, you can join in, join the conversation live and be a part of the Q&A. So if you have any questions about whatever we're talking about or other questions as well, we do answer those and kind of have a nice hangout community uh, chat. It's really, really fun to do these live streams compared to regular videos where I'm just talking to myself into a camera, um, even though I do like getting into the comments and uh, talking to you guys. So definitely enable those notifications, especially if you've been a subscriber for a while. Make sure you guys hit that. That way you guys don't miss out on the live streams and other videos as well. So today we are talking about the GH5S, which has just been announced by Panasonic. I have to say, I told you so. <laughs> So I made a video about the GH5S when there were different rumors. There were a couple things that were found, um, little leaks, little hints, some stuff that wasn't meant to be found. Uh, I talked about it, and a lot of people surprisingly were quite negative in that video, saying that this is just a rumor, this is not going to happen, this doesn't make sense. I was like 99.9% .9 sure that this was going to happen, or else I wouldn't have made a rumor video. I typically don't make those kind of videos, uh, but I was fairly certain, and obviously it did happen. The GH5S was announced. Uh, most of the things that I thought would happen did happen, but there's a few negatives, unfortunately. Uh, something that I wanted to happen didn't happen, and something that I wasn't expecting also happened. I guess we'll save that for a little bit. Let's start talking about the differences between the GH5. I'm not going to go over all of the, you know, the specs of the camera, just the differences. Most of us uh, know about the GH5. A lot of us have watched reviews. A lot of us own the camera, including myself. Here is a GH5. The GH5S is almost the same body. It's difficult to tell apart unless you have an S here a larger record button or a little ring around the controls over here. So first off, the huge change is the resolution. Instead of having a 20 megapixel sensor, we have a 10, slightly over a 10 megapixel pixel, megapixel sensor, <laughs> megapixel sensor. Now, what is the point of that? If you're a still shooter, that's a downside, honestly. You might get slightly better low light performance, but you have half of the pixels. And honestly, I have this part of as part of the negatives. Um, if you're going to shoot images, well, I, think, I think most people are shooting stills. Or most people are shooting video, not stills with their GH5. That's what they buy it. But a lot of us, especially those who can't afford multiple cameras, will buy it for video, but they'll still use it as a stills camera. It's definitely capable, especially if you're um, not doing something super high end. Uh, but even, you know, you could still shoot fo uh, wedding photography with it, especially family stuff. It's definitely capable. Uh, but what that 10 megapixel sensor does for video is offer us much better low light performance. I will talk about my thoughts and what kind of um, differences we're seeing compared to the GH5 a little bit towards the end of this. Uh, so definitely stick around for that. But we have a smaller sensor resulting in better low light, which is basically the biggest complaint, one of the biggest, if not probably the biggest complaint with all these Panasonic and all these Micro Four Thirds cameras, especially uh, when looking at uh, video side and comparing them to other cameras like the Sony's, it really doesn't hold a candle to it. Um, now we're going to get much better low light performance. So that's great. Panasonic really, really needed this. Next off, it has dual ISOs, 400 and 2500 ISO. What this is supposed to do is give you really good uh, low light performance at a higher ISO. So you start out at 400, you go all the way up to say 2000 and then it gets noisier. And then as soon as you hit 2500, it should get cleaner actually, which is surprising. Now the sensor has uh, dual circuitry. So it runs one set of circuits for the 400 and up and then one set for the higher ISO. So it's going to give us better low light performance um, at that 2500, kind of like resets the performance. Now, how well does this work in reality? Well, with the newly released EVA1, looking at the performance there, it does get better when you hit that 2500, but when you compare it to its biggest competitor, say the, the Canon C200, I think that the camera still looks slightly cleaner, even though it doesn't use this type of um, dual native ISO technology. It just has one native ISO and scales up and the camera looks uh, better. It looks, it's similar, but overall I think it's better. So we'll have to see how it actually works when I get my GH5S in for testing. And of course we're gonna be comparing it to this camera right here. And I have looked at some footage that's out there uh, and I will be sharing a link in the video description so you guys can check out some low light uh, shots. It does look quite good. Next, we have Cinema 4K at 4K 30 and 60. Previously, if you're shooting the full 4K, uh, the slightly wider than UHD 4K, you were at 24. 
So it's nice to have 30 and 60, especially the 60 if you're going to be slowing it down and you want that, that cinema aspect ratio. Next, we have 1080p uh, up to 240 frames per second. Now, this is really impressive. The GH5 did up to 180, which is already better than a lot of the cameras in the market. Now, it will go up to 240, which is double what like all the Sonys are doing. Now, unfortunately, once you go above 180, which is what the GH5 goes up to, you do get a crop. So even though you're using a micro four-thirds sensor, which isn't that large anyways, it's going to crop in further, meaning you're going to get reduced low-light performance, and you're also gonna get uh, more in focus, so not as shallow a of a depth of field. It's still great to have this, uh, but that is a downside. Um, but I would rather have 240 with a crop than uh, without a crop. Now we still have to test how good the image quality is. Typically when you're going above like 120 on the GH5, you do see a noticeable uh, detail loss um, compared to, you know, like shooting at 120. So hopefully at like 180, it looks cleaner and better than the uh, the GH5 since it doesn't have to do as much processing with all that data. Next, the low light, uh, the rolling shutter has been improved roughly 30%. Now this is impressive. It does make sense since it doesn't have to read out as many pixels. It doesn't have to read out uh, roughly, I don't know what it is, 15 to 16 megapixels. It only reads out around 8, uh, 8.3. So it's about 30% improved, and the GH5 was already very good. Very, it was on par with some of the cinema cameras. It had barely any rolling shutter. So it wasn't something that needed to be improved, but it has. So if you're shooting sports, if you're panning really quickly following subjects, uh, if you're shooting out of moving cars or something like that, you'll get better performance. Next, we have timecode in and out with a BNC cable. So full timecode support. I personally don't use that. Um, I shoot quickly, like with weddings, we're using three, four cameras, sometimes five, and then we sync everything later with Pluralize, and that does work quite well. But this makes it more of a professional camera. We have 14-bit raw images, so higher quality or less compressed raw images, but once again, this isn't really like a photography camera, so I don't know how much that matters, but I think that, that says something about the future Panasonic cameras that are gonna be coming out after this. Um, one thing I learned from the camera store live TV stream that they did on the GH5, um, they, it has uh, camera operation filters for the audio. So since it doesn't have IBIS, it's gonna pick up less noise, it doesn't have to do the same filtering, they're saying it might have slightly better audio quality, but it can also filter out specifically like lens noises and stuff like that, where they can map it, uh, what it typically sounds like. So that's interesting. Also has line input. Uh, so if you're recording audio, not from a microphone, but say from a soundboard at an, at an event, um, you're able to set it so that the preamps go down much lower and get and it could take in a much hotter signal without having to use like an attenuator um, in the signal. And hopefully the regular, the, that would work for everything. Like for example, when you're shooting with the VideoMic Pro that does plus 20 decibels, it gives you a really strong signal. Uh, the negative 12 for the preamps uh, is not enough. The signal is too loud. So I can't use those mics at plus 20. I have to use them at zero, which kind of defeats the purpose of having a mic like that. So it should give us cleaner audio. So that's really great. That was one of the issues with Panasonic's. I'm glad they added that in. And last, or almost last, we get USB power. So the GH5 does not have this, even though we have USB-C, which is very, very flexible, the most flexible connector, you are not able to charge your camera or power your camera with USB. So now it's gonna have it. You're not gonna be able to charge the battery, but if you're shooting, doing something very long, you can plug in a portable USB power bank, which are, you know, it's very cheap, and power the camera that way. So that is awesome. That's something that I've really enjoyed with my uh, NX1, with the Sony cameras. I think that is a great feature. And just add on to that, the Camera Store TV said that the battery life should be better uh, because it doesn't have IBIS, which is going into the negatives already. It does not have IBIS, which sucks. But because it doesn't have it, it doesn't have to keep it stable. Even if you turn the IBIS off on this camera, it still has to use power to keep the sensor from moving around in there. So it's still running power. And because of that, the battery life went from like roughly almost four hours on the GH4 to somewhere at two to two and a half hour mark on the GH5. Okay, switching over to the negatives. This is the biggest deal for me, honestly. Um, to some people, it's gonna be a deal breaker. And personally, I don't think I'm gonna buy the GH5. Um, this is my camera. Some people thought I was gonna return it or, or sell it because of the downsides it had. It didn't work for some of the things I wanted it to work for, but it's a great camera. It really has some standout features that make it worth keeping and using for specific things. 
the IBIS is one of those things. The IBIS is phenomenal. Um, the EM1 Mark II Olympus, those are really good. That's really good too, maybe even slightly better. But of course, that's not a great video camera like this one is. So with that new sensor, they're not implementing IBIS. I don't know if this is a limitation with that sensor, the size. Maybe it's a limitation with that uh, dual ISO circuitry since it has to have dual circuits on the sensor. Um, one circuit for 400, one for 2500. Um, if that's the case, I wish they did not use that. I don't know how big of a difference that's making for the low light, but I'd rather have IBIS than the dual circuitry, especially seeing the results from the EVA-1. That's not a huge difference, at least um, from what I could tell and what I've seen. IBIS is a huge feature, being able to walk, being able to walk and get steady footage without a gimbal. Uh, it doesn't replace a gimbal, but it's the closest thing to it. Being able to handhold and almost have it look like a tripod shot that has been awesome with this camera. And unfortunately, we no longer have that. On top of it, negative is the price, uh, $2,500 instead of $2,000. So that's quite a big of a bump, mainly for better low light and some other kind of features that are a little bit more professional as well. Uh, $500 bump on that. Uh, and since that camera's coming out, I don't know if there's gonna be a price drop on the GH5. I don't think there will. I think they're doing like kind of something what you know Sony does, introduces a model with a higher end price and keeps the other models. But we are gonna see some of these, more of these used on the market, meaning you might be able to buy one of these for 1500 or so, or spend 2500 on a new GH5S. Uh, like I mentioned uh, previously, 10 megapixels isn't great for photos. Yes, you can shoot photos, especially if it's in good lighting conditions and you're not going to be cropping and your, your, um, your focus is sharp. You can shoot 10, you can use it, and people are still going to use it if they're mainly shooting video but taking some family photos, stuff like that. But if you want results where you're, you're, somebody's paying you to take the photos, I don't think that's enough, especially with 5K monitors, 4K monitors. 15 megapixels, uh, 10 megapixels is not enough to crop. Um, even like 12 megapixels on the a7S II, it was really limiting to shoot photos. Um, so that's not designed to be a photo camera, but it is a downside if you wanna have a, a camera that's gonna be a hybrid. And I think because of this, because of the IBIS and because of the lower megapixel sensor, a lot of people are still gonna be buying the GH5 new, especially if they wanna do both. Uh, next, 4K detail will be worse in, in uh, low light conditions or in good lighting conditions. So since the GH5 is a 20 megapixel sensor and it's taking the full a 16 by nine portion, the full width of the sensor, down sampling that to 4K, which is almost double the pixels that that 4K needs, the image is quite detailed, much more detailed than like the GH4. Um, and now, since it's a standard 8.3 megapixel readout, we are gonna get less detail. Now, why, why I mentioned the good lighting conditions is because the low light is better, and typically if you're shooting, uh, even on a camera that oversamples, like the a7R3, a6500, uh, the GH5, or another camera, when you go up into those higher um, ISOs, you have a lot of noise, and because of that, you have to run more denoising, which loses detail in your image. So if you're shooting at, let's say, ISO 3200, maybe somewhere around that point, the detail is gonna be similar. Uh, but if you're shooting below that, the GH5 is gonna give you a sharper image. Now, not everybody cares about a very sharp image. I personally do. I like to have a very nice, clean, sharp image, probably like what you guys are seeing right now, even though it's live streaming. It looks very, very detailed, looks very clean. Um, now, the other big reason to have a nice detailed image is if you're gonna be doing any sort of cropping. So if you're shooting in 4K, but you're delivering in 1080p, and you wanna be able to crop in on your image and get kind of a two camera look, or even sometimes a three camera look, change up your framing, or if you have some kind of a mistakes with your framing, you can crop in and you still have a detailed image. It looks much better with a camera that's oversampling compared to a camera like the a7S II, which doesn't do it. So if you compare like the a7R3 4K to the a7S II 4K, the a7R3 4K is quite a bit more detailed, and that does matter if you're cropping in. So that is a downside. If you're shooting in the high ISOs, like I mentioned, it's not gonna be a difference, and it may even look worse if you're at 6400, it will look worse. Um, keep that in mind though, if you're gonna be cropping in and doing a multi-camera look from your 4K. Uh, next on the list, uh, 4K anamorphic instead of 6K. So one of the great features about the GH5 is this is like the best anamorphic camera under like 25 grand or even more expensive. That's 6K anamorphic because of that large uh, kind of almost square sensor and then you de-squeeze it and you get a very nice detailed anamorphic image. I don't shoot anamorphic myself. I've been wanting to try it out and I probably will in the future. 
but it's nice to have 6K when you're shooting anamorphic, and then if you need to do some stabilization, crop in, you'll still get a nice detailed 4K image, just like Hollywood has been shooting higher res than they needed forever now. When we are delivering 2K, they're shooting in 4K. When we're delivering 4K, they're shooting in 6K or 8K. So that's really good to have, um, but since the sensor is only 10.3 uh, or uh, roughly a slightly higher than 10 megapixels, um, we're limited to 4K anamorphic. Now, uh, one thing I wanted is 10-bit and 4K60. Since we have less pixels to deal with, there's less processing, I figured that they would allow 10-bit and 4K60. That is not the case. We're still limited to 8-bit. Now, I have to say, I typically shoot 8-bit anyways. If you're shooting standard video, I don't think there's a huge difference. Uh, the low light actually was slightly better in 8-bit than in 10-bit, and it's slightly more detailed on the GH5 if you're shooting an 8-bit video compared to 10-bit, and it's also easier to edit. Um, now, with that said, if you're shooting V-Log and you're really pushing your image, that 10-bit is nice to have. We still don't have it in 4K60, unfortunately. And I think this isn't a limitation of the hardware. I think it's a software limitation that Panasonic is implementing because you have the EVA-1, which costs you know three times what the GH5S is costing. And if they're going to be putting 4K60, 10-bit, and all these amazing features, um, it doesn't give enough of a difference between the two cameras to warrant people spending more money. So we're almost done with this list here. Uh, autofocus, they said it's been improved, but not by much, uh, which in my book means it really hasn't been improved. Um, you know, you might see some a little bit of tweaking, but it's not there. So they're not using um, phase detection, unfortunately. This is that's really what they need if they want good video autofocusing. Um, and if there was a way to get the contrast to work well. I think they would have put out a firmware update already after all this autofocus stuff uh, went down. But I just think the, the contrast detection, it just isn't capable of it. It's a hardware limitation. Okay, so finishing this off, before we start the Q&A, I want to mention the low-light performance. So Luke Newman um, has a video out with low-light performance, and um, it looks really good. 4000 ISO looks clean, like really clean. Um, of course, when you upload to YouTube, it compresses the image, it compresses the noise as well. Um, so what I saw is roughly a two-stop difference between the GH5. So this guy, I'm really happy up to 1600 ISO on uh, the GH5S, at least looking at YouTube and you know having a good amount of experience with this camera and a bunch of other cameras, the 12,800 ISO looked similar to 3200 on this camera. So on this camera, you can use 3200, if you don't mind seeing the noise, if you need to get the shot. But other than that, I'd like to stay at 1600. That's what 30, 12,800 looked like. Now, I almost never, actually, I never need to shoot that high. I don't need to shoot at 12,800. Um, so I think what it means with the GH5S is 6,400 ISO is going to be usable. So instead of the limit being 1600 on this, for me personally, and noise is kind of a preference uh, depending on how sensitive you are, how clean you want your image to look. But instead of 1600, I could shoot at 6400, which is really what I wanted. Um, actually, I wanted 3200 from the GH5. Now we have 6400 that looks quite clean. That's great. If you like the 4K60, if you like the V-Log, um, if you like some of the other features that the GH5 had other than IBIS, but you wanted low light, which was a lot of people, um, then there you go. You have some really clean low light performance. So. I'm happy. Now, uh, I'm seeing Thomas is saying, is it true that the camera has 14 stops of dy dynamic range? I don't know. Uh, when I get it in, I will compare it to the Sony's, the, probably the a7R 3 or the a7S 3 if that's out at a similar time. And we'll see. Um, I would hope that the dynamic range has been improved uh, with this new sensor, but I don't know. A lot of times the companies will quote dynamic range from photos, from raw, for raw photos, which com of course it's different from you know compressed video. So uh, that's about it, guys. Um, the low light performance has been improved. We have some other nice features. The price tag is higher by $500 and maybe by $1,000 if you're willing to buy a used GH5. And the worst thing of all, we don't have IBIS. We don't have good autofocus or we don't have great autofocus, which sucks. Uh, but even worse, I think, is the IBIS being gone, which is a great feature from the GH5. All right, guys, so that's my whole opinion on the GH5S. I am going to be getting one in for testing and comparison. So if you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Those of you guys have been following, or if you're new, enable those notifications because YouTube does filter out videos that they show you. 
A lot of people are subscribed to a lot of channels and um, I see videos that I miss from channels that I love to watch and then I go search up their channel like, well, there's two videos here that didn't even come up in my subscription feed. Enables notifications. Uh, you guys will just get a little pop-up when I post a new video. If you're interested, you guys can watch it. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and ask in the chat section. Um, I will be answering your guys' questions. Let's start off with the GH5, and then after that, we'll, maybe I'll take some uh, random questions as well. If you guys want to do a super chat, which is basically kind of a, a, a donation, it's a donation, a way for you to show your support and appreciation for what we do. You guys could definitely do that. Of course, it's not required. Any funds that come through through the super chats go straight to Vadim and I going out for lunch instead of eating sandwiches or sometimes, a lot of times in my case, not eating anything at all because I'm trying to get work done. So if you guys want to do that, that's appreciated. Okay, so I'm taking a look at questions on the GH5S. Um, 4K 60p over HDMI, 10-bit 4K 60p over HDMI. Yes, um, the GH5 has that, so you'll be able to still do the same thing um, instead of getting it in camera. Like a dad is asking, does it make the G9 more appealing? If you do, if you want to do photos with the G9, I think so. Um, the G9 is slightly improved over the GH5. Uh, on the photo side, it's limited uh, by software. On the video side, unfortunately. Um, I think that the 4K uh, 60 is limited to like 10 minutes at a time or something like that. So if you want to do photos, probably. Um, there's no IBIS. Thank you, like a dad. Thank you for the, the lunch donation and for your appreciation. George said, autofocus and IBIS is for little girls. <laughs> well, you know, that's fine if, that, if that's actually your opinion, unless you're just being uh, a smart aleck. Um, if you don't need it, that's fine. There's a lot of cinema cameras that don't have either, but a lot of the pros who do use smaller cameras like Philip Bloom, um, say that they, once they've tried the IBIS, once they've tried the autofocus, it's improved their workflow, improved how they shoot, sped things up for them. And I think in my book, if you, um, if you can do things better or faster, why not? Don't just be stuck on, you know, How's it always been done? Do I need to try this new stuff? Try it out. See it for your workflow. And YC Imaging, wow. Thank you. $50 Super Chat. That's going to buy us uh, a lot of lunches. <laughs> and we will appreciate it. Vadim will appreciate some nice lunch getting out of the office. Definitely appreciate it. So um, you're asking uh, YC Imaging, hopefully I'm saying that right. Please do a breakdown video explaining live streaming uh, via DSLR mirrorless. Big fan, by the way, you helped me pull the trigger on my iMac. Thank you, um, I appreciate it. And yes, um, I think I may have done, I was thinking about doing a video sometime, but usually these kind of things get pushed back for a while, sometimes months. We will do this and we will do this soon. Thank you. All right, let's see what other questions we have here. Okay. 25 cheeseburgers. 25 cheeseburgers for the 50. Yeah, we could buy 25 McDonald's cheeseburgers. Yeah, that's true. I think we might want to do something maybe a little bit nicer than that. So maybe it won't be 25, but uh, okay. Let's see. Other GH5 questions. So if you guys have any other GH5, GH5 questions, um, I will answer those and then we'll move on. Uh, Hugo saying GH5, no IBIS, no good autofocus, low light is probably still worse than the A6500, $2,500 price tag. I will compare it to the A6500 and the A7R3, which are kind of similar in low light, surprisingly. Um, and we'll see. It could be close. It could be close. I guess we'll see. I mean, it's 10 megapixel sensor, so. Okay. Let's see. I don't know if I'm seeing much more uh, questions. Damien saying, are you Canadian? No, we're here in the States, but we're actually Slavic um, from our nationality. Um, do you know IBIS? Greg is asking, don't you think no IBIS is a step back in a missed opportunity? Greg, yeah, we talked about this a little bit early in the video. If you just jo joined in, I think this is a huge, a huge downside. I think it is a mistake by Panasonic if they had the choice of having it or not having it, maybe they would have to get rid of the dual ISOs. Um, that's one of the biggest pros of the GH5 is that amazing IBIS. So, 
Char Charbax is asking, have they improved the autofocus? I heard that it's improved a little bit. And when I hear it's improved a little bit, that means it really hasn't been improved enough <laughs> to notice. Uh, Miguel is asking, is it worth waiting for a future A7S update before getting a GH5S? If you're willing to go Sony or you already have Sony cameras, yes, I, and, and you're not limited in your shooting. If you have to go shoot a project that's going to be making you money and you need to upgrade your camera, you might as well get something now and sell it later. The resale, value are quite, they're quite, uh, the resale values on cameras are quite good, especially if you don't wait a few years, if you have a current model. Okay. Let's see what else we have here. Uh, Ahmed, Ahmed uh, twi that twice <laughs> said, what difference in video quality will we get using a 10 megapixel sensor rather than 20? Um, and I see some people said there's probably, it's gonna be better because it's a newer sensor. Um, it's gonna be worse. I can 99.9% .9 guarantee you in good lighting conditions or in decent lighting conditions, you're gonna have less detail because with the GH5, you're basically taking 15 megapixels of data for that, you know, that 16 by nine crop for the, and then you're cramming it down to 8.3 megapixels. You're almost taking double the data. It's you, that, what that does is compresses noise and gives you more detail. You're not gonna be able to do that with the GH5S. Uh, so you're gonna have less detail in video in normal to good lighting conditions, uh, which can be a difference, can make a difference if you're, if you're cropping into your footage, like you're doing 1080p crops, you wanna have it look like two different cameras. Okay. Let's see. I see we have another super chat. I have to scroll down here. If you guys have questions specific to the GH5, can you guys repost those and tag my name into it so I see it a little bit easier? Because I see a lot of comments, not a lot of questions, which is making it a little bit difficult to, uh, to answer questions specifically. Um, Kyle is asking, do you think Panasonic might offer a better price for the GH5S to those like myself who purchased, who just purchased a GH5? I, I highly doubt it. Um, they're setting this up as a second camera, a higher tier camera, not like they just replaced the model. And if you bought it within the last 30 days, they'll give you a rebate. Or usually it's if, if they lower the price and you just bought it within the last 30 days, they'll give you a rebate. So if you just bought it like within a month and you think you're going to want this camera, of course you can return your camera. Uh, but if you're joining in, Watch after after this live stream is done. Go back and watch and hear some of the negatives too. Maybe some of the things, uh, some of the negatives are going to affect you, and you may not want to upgrade. Max uh, Jeff is asking if I will be buying a GH5S. No, honestly, I have uh, Sony's that are great in low light, great in autofocus. Um, I still have I haven't sold this because if I'm doing very long recordings or I want the IBIS. Um, this is a great tool, so I'm keeping this around. So I don't really need better low light because I have it with my Sony's. Uh, so no, especially without that IBIS. Um, if, if it had the IBIS, I would probably sell this and get the GH5S, but without that, eh. Okay, so we have here, let me scroll up a little bit. Um, I'm sorry, I cannot pronounce your name, Benoit. Hopefully that's close. I apologize. Uh, did a, ten, a 10 euro super chat. I appreciate it. I think euros are worth more, I think, than dollars. <laughs> He's saying, just a quick thank you for your nice content. I discovered you since the first Hackintosh video and the content is better and better and better. So thank you. Thank you. I definitely appreciate it. We definitely want to improve our quality, uh, our presentation, the formats of the videos, the variety, and just make great content for you guys. Um, so I'm glad you're enjoying the content. Thank you for being a part of our little community here. Uh, Jeff is saying they're 100% wrong. Um, never mind. So I don't think that's a question. Uh, Jonathan is saying, is a GH5S worth the extra dollars versus the normal GH5? If you don't care about the IBIS and you really care about the low light video, yes, it's worth it. Other than that, I think a lot of people are gonna be happier with the GH5, honestly. Okay, Jeremy's asking, GH5S versus GH5 plus noise reduction in post. Huh, yes, that's very good. Um, I think I need to write that down and I think that's gonna make a great video. Um, and maybe even the GH5 with a speed booster, you know, you could buy a used GH5 for 1500, a speed booster. So you're at like 2100. If you're okay with using uh, adapted lenses, you know, that gives you a stop right there. Plus some noise reduction. You'll still get the IBIS. 
uh, very cool. Jonathan is asking, who's a GH5S over the GH54? Okay, I think my, my answer is relevant. If you really need low light and you don't need IBIS, there you go. Okay. Um, uh, I think we're probably almost done with uh, the GH5 questions. Thanks, for name. And people are tagging my name now, so it's making it a lot easier. Uh, Jeff is saying, do, do I think the multi-aspect sensor makes it so IBIS is not possible? No. Uh, as far as I know, the GH5 is a still multi-aspect ratio sensor because you can shoot square video with it. Um, you could shoot anamorphic video, video with it, which is square video with a, a different lens or a lens adapter and stretch it out. Um, I don't think so. I think if there's any... Um, hardware limitation. I think it's probably the, the dual circuitry for the sensor because if they're having to connect from both sides now, you can't have the sensor connected on both sides and have IBIS. I can see it connected from one side and then you have like a panel hardware that's moving it around. So, okay. All right, guys. Let me see if there's any more GH5S questions. Um, Warren is asking, uh, was the two stops of uh, imaging, I'm guessing like the low light performance, worth the investment and engineering effort? I guess we'll see. If Panasonic keeps making the S version, the more sensitive low light versions, that means it was profitable for them. Um, we'll see how well it sells. Typically, if a camera is really going to sell well, it typically right when it hits the market, it sells out. Um, and then you still have weeks and weeks of it being sold out or a batch will come in the next day it's all sold out again. If we if it shows up on whatever the launch day is and it's available to buy, I that means it didn't do well enough in my opinion. Okay, Prad Product Sanera Norland uh, commented, sorry if I messed up your name. Uh, GH5S looks super crisp. He's tested both side by side and it may look better than the GH5. Interesting. Um, if that is the case, if it's more detailed um, in the 4K, that will that will be very interesting. That will be a first in all of my testing and comparing tons of cameras. So I'm excited to check it out now, especially since you said that. Okay. Quantum, thank you for subscribing. <laughs> Max Uria for POTUS, President of the United States. Unfortunately, that's not possible. I was not born here in the United States. So even if I wanted to, uh, even if I had a huge following that would vote for me, which still would not be enough, um, that would not be possible. Not that I would want to. <laughs> All right. Max, are you still using the A7R3? Yes. I'm, the A7R3 uh, is my preferred choice, and, and I'm not going to be buying a GH5S. Um, Steve's asking, 3200 usable on the GH5? Depends what your thoughts are of usable are. Um, personally, I want to stay at or below 1600, 3200 if I have to, but I'm not happy with the noise there. Okay, let's see. A Sony press conference at 4 p.m. here at CES is what Chartbox is saying. I don't think they're launching a new camera at CES. They typically don't. Um, yeah. Jordan is saying, the GH5S is a 1.86 crop rather than 2X. Really? That would be very interesting um, if it has a larger sensor overall. Um, that would mean that all of the Micro Four Thirds lenses have to be wider than 2X crop over full frame, which is possible. They typically are a little bit wider, but I think you'd get more the softer edges, maybe more vignetting from lenses. That is very interesting. I will look into that, Jordan. Uh, thank you for mentioning that. Okay. All right. Uh, 3D print creator saying, how about dynamic range? Larger pixels give better dynamic range. Uh, I don't know, honestly, but we will test it. I think that would be a great test. Fit by Kevin is asking, is it worth buying uh, Vlog for his GH5? Um, if so, do I have a tutorial on how to use it? I don't have a tutorial yet. I've wanted to make it, um, but I'm really backed up on different videos. There's lots of great tutorials out there though. Uh, personally, if you need to maximize your dynamic range, if you're shooting outside when the sun is blaring, um, and you want to 
have the widest dynamic range possible, that's when I would use it. Or you're shooting indoors and you don't want to blow out whatever is outside. Let's say you're shooting with a window behind you. Um, for like weddings, I'll shoot uh, S-Log in that situation. But if you're not doing that, I don't think so. It takes a lot more time to get the image to look great. And um, in a lot of cases, it's not really worth it, at least to me personally. Jeff is asking, do you think they removed the IBIS to push people towards the uh Eva one, I don't think so. Um, I honestly don't think so, but of course I don't know. And Z Pro Media, 20 Canadian dollars, if I'm reading that right, uh, for the super chat. Thank you. I definitely appreciate it. Vadim definitely appreciates it. We got a lot of lunches this super <laughs> this live stream. That is awesome. Um, I didn't know you were in Canada. Uh, I may have missed it. Maybe I saw it in one of your videos. Uh, thank you for the great content, by the way. I definitely enjoy your channel. Um, so Zed Pro Media saying, loving the stream, bro. I have a feeling that the lack of IBIS has something to do with the dual native ISO. Uh, do you think the lower 10 megapixels would help reducing the rolling shutter even more? Less data to push, I think. Yes, yeah, so we actually, we talked about this a little bit earlier. I, if there was one thing that I could, that I would have to choose, uh, as in why they did not put IBIS in there, I think that's exactly it. I think it's a dual native ISO. My question is, how much of a difference does that dual native ISO make? Um, what I mentioned earlier is looking at the C200 versus EVA1 low light comparisons, even with that dual native ISO, at 2500 ISO, uh, this, the C200, where 2500 where it should be the cleanest as far as the higher ISOs, C200 looks just as clean, if not cleaner, in those higher ISOs. So is it worth it? Is it worth that? Is it worth losing IBIS? If, if you're not losing IBIS, it doesn't have IBIS anyways, like the EVA1, it probably wouldn't have, okay. But if you're losing IBIS for that, I don't think it's worth it. I would take a little bit worse low light if you're capable of getting clean at 6400 anyways and having IBIS. And I think not having IBIS is going to turn a lot of people away from the GH5S, including myself. I think I would have sold my GH5 and got a GH5S if it had IBIS. But that's one of the reasons I grabbed my GH5 instead of a Sony to use it in some occasions. As far as rolling shutter, what I have heard from the B&H stuff that they, you know, they typically do videos and they talk to the manufacturers, they're saying roughly 30 or 33% uh, less rolling shutter, which is crazy because the GH5S already has very good uh, rolling shutter performance. So I guess it's even better. And now it's going to be beating out cameras like the FS7 and other cinema, you know, higher end cinema cameras. So... Uh, thank you. I appreciate the super chat. And we have another one. We have Jeff. Good to see you and talk to you in the comments. Thank you for uh, five Canadian dollars for the super chat. I definitely appreciate it. Man, we're, we're set for lunches for a while now. <laughs> thank you guys. I appreciate it. Um, I see people are commenting that they enjoy the content. Uh, some couple people just subscribed. Thank you guys. Um, and man, we're, we are on a roll. Ryan Hamilton, thank you for your super chat as well. Um, Ryan said, given the similar price point, would you steer people away from the GH5S and towards the Sony a7S II or uh, toward another body and system? Well, it's kind of hard. I think the GH5S is basically for anybody who doesn't absolutely need the IBIS because that's a downside that does need really good low light performance and wants like 4k 60 and like 10 bit and um, the anamorphic features, right? You don't get the 10 bit or anamorphic uh, or 4k 60 in a Sony body, at least not yet. And anamorphic, I, I doubt Sony's going to have it um, because it's not a four third sensor. So uh, personally, I enjoy the Sony cameras. The a7 III is an excellent hybrid camera, probably the best hybrid camera on the market. It's what I'm shooting with now. Um, so if you need the 10 bit or you need, uh, the, the 4k 60, at least at this time, and you need the light, this is kind of what the camera, this is the camera for you. Basically, if you don't need the 10 bit or 4k 60, which I don't shoot that much slow motion and I don't need the 10 bit either. Um, the Sony eight bit stands up really, really well against the, the Panasonic 10 bit. Um, I would say yes take a look at a Sony, especially like the a6500 you could buy for like 1200 bucks right now. It's going to have as good low light. Most likely it has IBIS in it, uh, has a great looking image. Yes, it has downsides and have 4k 60, but, um, so yeah, I guess I would in some cases. And I think in a lot of cases I'd steer them towards the GH5 actually. Okay. So I'm, I'm only reading over questions that are, that have my name tagged in them. Interesting. So Josh is asking, is vlog a pay option? 
or available out of the box on the GH5S. So with this, I had to pay 100 bucks. I had to order a silly envelope with a number in it and wait for it to ship and arrive and activate it. Um, uh, that's interesting. I really hope for that 2,500 bucks they're including it and for something that's specific to video. Uh, their excuse was not everybody would know how to use this. If we included it, people are gonna make mistakes. They're gonna call customer support asking why their footage is so gray, uh, stuff like that. Um, I think they just wanted to make a little bit more money, which is fine. Uh, but I think hopefully for the 2,500 it's included, but I honestly do not know. I haven't heard that mentioned, so I'm guessing it probably isn't, but it should be, honestly. We're looking at Sony's under a thousand bucks with the multiple S logs here. Do I think uh, Macan94 is asking, will the GH5 get an update to the release date of the GH5S? If you're asking like uh, like a firmware update, I don't know. I'm not sure what else they would add. Um, they said they improved video autofocus and it really isn't much of a difference at all. Okay. All right, so let's see what else we have here. I think we're gonna finish up here pretty soon. Uh, we've been live for 50 minutes. I try to keep these things at a half hour. So <laughs> uh, the camera store, so Little Force Films mentioned that the camera store said that Vlog is included. Great, yeah, so I watched most of their live stream. I missed a little bit of the intro, uh, which is probably when they mentioned that. So I'm glad, I'm glad that it is included. Thank you guys, you're teaching me. And Jeremy uh, super chatted five bucks as well. And he said I already that um, I already answered his question, and he just wanted to support. Thank you, man. We appreciate it. We definitely do. Okay. It doesn't shoot raw, Seth. Sandy saying the ibis is, is a big deal. I totally agree. I totally agree on that. Um. Okay, guys. So um, let's see. If you guys have any more questions, I think I'll do a few minutes of random questions. It doesn't have to be related to uh, the GH5S or the GH5. Uh, if you have some any kind of random question, we'll finish off here. Um, so to those of you guys who are watching this later, uh, this video is going to get cut right after this. So if you guys want to join in on the live streams, the conversation, the community, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and enable those notifications so you guys do not miss out on future videos like this. Uh, we would love to have you guys here. At this point, I'm going to end the video and we're going to do a Q&A session that's just random questions. And if you want to get in on the next one, make sure you guys subscribe. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.